What's up, everybody? Welcome to the week nine edition of the Occupy Fantasy Football podcast. This is the season long fantasy football edition where we take on questions about start sit decisions, trades you may be considering, waiver wire acquisitions. I'm Brian Jester, co founder here at Occupy Fantasy. Joining me again this week is Chris Rooney, our NFL writer who was in last week, and we decided to bring him back one more time. What's up, Chris? Hey, Brian. Appreciate you having me on again. Obviously, I didn't screw this up too badly last week since you're having me back on and happy to be here for sure. Yeah, Chris writes our NFL Daily Plug, so obviously we trust his opinions when it comes to NFL matters. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be on both the season long and the DFS podcast this week. So uh, glad to have you, Chris. Before we jump into this, if you're watching this on YouTube, we have the video version up this week. Be sure to click subscribe to get the latest videos uh, directly to you. And if you're listening to the podcast version, like most people are, definitely subscribe in your favorite podcast app uh, to have every new episode directly delivered to your feed. So Chris, let's jump into it. Let's talk about waiver wire decisions for week nine. We know that most leagues probably have processed waivers uh, on Tuesday nights, but there are some leagues out there Wednesday and, and even later on Thursday. And maybe some of these guys are still available. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to start at the quarterback position, Chris. And a guy sure. that I've seen uh, because he hasn't played in a while is Cam Newton in shallow leagues. Uh, you know, it's, it's tough to hold on to these guys sometimes uh, when, when they're injured for so long and your bench isn't too deep. So when do you think we'll see Cam Newton back? Do you think he's worth grabbing if he is out there? I mean, it's tough because we need to monitor practice reports and see when he actually returns to action here because I don't think he's done that yet. Um, and I do think Kyle Allen has been already declared the starter here in week nine against the Tennessee Titans for the Panthers. But looking ahead from there, I mean, great matchups coming up for Cam Newton if he can return to the lineup. Games against the Green Bay Packers, Atlanta Falcons, New Orleans Saints, the next three after this for the Panthers. So definitely a lot of shootout potential there in those three weeks. And you know, if you're able to add and stash Cam Newton on your bench, it, it might be a good move here. Yeah, I think so. And like I said, I've seen him in a couple of leagues. And as long as you can afford the space and you're not completely stacked at quarterback, uh, definitely someone to pick up because we should see him back soon. Uh, mm -hmm. Chris, what about running backs? Now, I imagine guys like Jordan Howard and Devin Singletary are already taken in most leagues uh, because both of those guys get pretty significant workload bumps uh, in week number mm -hmm. eight. But assuming they're not there, any other running backs that you think we can take a look at in our season-long fantasy football leagues that are, might be available? I think my favorite one that, that should be widely available because he's missed some time recently with injuries of his own is uh, Jalen Samuels of the Pittsburgh Steelers, especially because of all the injuries with the other running backs on the Steelers roster. You know, Monday Night Football against the Dolphins is probably a game most people ignored unless they're playing DFS or betting on it or something. But uh, James Conner uh, injured late with, an I think, AC uh, sprain in his sh uh, shoulder, right? So um, if he's unable to go on Sunday, that would mean Jalen Samuels is probably the RB1 for this dealer. So we definitely want that. Um, at least scrambling this week at running back. Yeah, I agree. We'll see. I know Connor is limited to start the week. Uh, and, and they are kind of thin because Benny Snell hurt his knee behind him. Uh, right. But either way, Jalen Samuels was... I guess cleared to play Monday night, but because they're playing the Dolphins, they decided to hold him out as a precaution. But he'll be back in full go this week, uh, and maybe at worst a 50-50 split. So if you're scrambling at running right. back, uh, Samuel should be near the top of your list. Um, what about some part-time players? Uh, Chris, I'm going to name three guys that I think might be available. Um, one for me, we'll have to watch practice reports and uh, uh, game day injury designations. For San Francisco, they play on Thursday night. Jeff Wilson, I know he had a stinger Sunday, but both Matt Breida and Raheem Mostert are banged up, uh, leaving just Tevin Coleman there. Right. If uh, if Wilson's healthy as a 12-point favorite, he could get some work. Um, and then Damian Williams and Mark Walton are other guys that I think uh, could be available. <laughs> Uh, we've already seen Jeff Wilson be the goal line specialist for the 49ers, even though uh, Kyle Shanahan doesn't want to admit that when he is active. So um, if Jeff Wilson is going on Thursday, that's me with just how strong this Niners team has been all year. But I think probably the most trustworthy option here of the three you named, and this is so gross to even suggest, but it's probably Mark Walton with the Dolphins. Um, you know, D Damian Williams has – a lot of competition for touches there. I understand that, you know, he saw more playing time after McCoy fumbled last week. And obviously you just covered everything going on with Jeff Wilson, but um, Mark Walton got most of the touches on Monday night. Kalen Ballage seems to be somewhat of an afterthought right now for 
um, Brian Flores and the Miami Dolphins on offense. So game against the Jets there. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen here. There's a chance that this could shoot out or there's a chance that this could be a six to three football game. But uh, Mark Walden definitely in a good spot here if you want to go to him. Yeah, and like you said, he dominated touches. He's dominated touches for the past three weeks in that offense right. and uh, uh, hasn't scored a touchdown yet, but should be due pretty soon right. based on his, his usage. Um, so, yeah, I like those three calls. Moving on to receiver, uh, the rare wide receiver handcuff, I think, Chris, Josh Reynolds in this Rams offense. Brandon Cooks yeah. had another nasty-looking concussion uh, in the Week 8 game against the Bengals. They do have a bye this upcoming week, but I have to think that with him having two concussions in such a short time frame that he may be out an extended period of time. This is me just speculating, but he's had multiple concussions in his career. Uh, I guess my point here is though, if Cooks looks like he may be out, Reynolds is definitely worth a pickup, I think. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, we saw Reynolds actually come right into the game on Sunday against the Bengals and actually catch a touchdown pass. So um, Sean McVay prefers to use those. I think 11 personnel, uh, three wide receiver sets a lot. He's done that ever since he got that job in Los Angeles. So Josh Reynolds probably slides into um, those formations without Cooks out there. So definitely a receiver playing for, you know, we like we talk about this all the time, a great uh, offense, great football team. So definitely interested in that opportunity. Yep, agree for sure. Those are all the guys I had looking at. Chris, any other maybe uh, deeper flyers uh, that you're, you're taking a look at? Yeah, I just had a couple questions for you at one. Receiver, are you interested in uh, Danny Amendola or Chris Conley at all? Now, Amendola for the Lions has seen 8 and 11 targets in the last two games for the Lions from Matt Stafford. And then Chris Conley, uh, 7 and 8 targets over the last two weeks as well. Also, Marquise Lee just placed on injured reserve for the Jaguars. So Conley's role in that offense behind DJ Chark, who probably is the clear wide receiver one, uh, seems to be more secure without Lee returning on the season. Yeah, I would probably prefer Conley. His opportunity has been pretty consistent, and it was going under the radar. We talked about him in the DFS episode mm -hmm. last week, uh, him underperforming his opportunity, and he's been pretty consistently involved in the Jaguars' offense as the number two, number three receiver. So I would probably choose Conley, and Jacksonville, I think, has a pretty nice schedule coming up. Amendola, um, we saw in week one, he got a ton of opportunity and then kind of fell off a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't trust Amendola, but I do think uh, Conley could be a more consistent performer. Yeah, well, give people a couple names for, uh, you know, obviously deeper league consideration there. And then at tight end, I mean, these bye weeks are killer, right? I mean, any interest, Darren Fells from the Texans, he's played a ton of the snaps recently, or Johnu Smith with the Titans. It looks like Delaney Walker is a problem getting into practice again this week, so we might get another Johnu Smith start. Would you consider either of these guys? Uh, I would definitely prefer Smith. Uh, I think he's a – Correct me if I'm wrong, but he's an athletic freak, right? But like pretty nice athletic profile, I believe. Yeah, he, he ranks very highly uh, by a lot of the metrics from, you know, combine evaluation, stuff like that, from what I've seen. I don't have it in front of me. I'm sorry, but definitely is a great athlete. And we've uh, seen a lot of this in the past with tight ends. You know, they get drafted decently high, like Johnny Smith was, I think, in the third round in 2018. Takes them a while to learn the blocking schemes and the routes from their coaches. This is year two in that offense for him. And so obviously uh, saw a little more of that upside last week week and i think if he starts again here in week nine he, he could have another big day yeah i would have no trouble ranking him as a top 12 tight end probably i haven't done that exercise so um but i i do think you know if, if delani misses again uh smith would definitely be in play for me so uh, i like those cool. calls all right why don't we uh move on to uh picking some uh survivor picks here right a lot of a lot of huge spread games last week, and, and we have a couple of them again here in week nine. Uh, first one is Niners favored by 10 points against the Cardinals on Thursday night. So I'm sure that'll be uh, one a lot of people look at just with how good San Francisco has been this year. And we also have the Buffalo Bills favored by nine and a half points against the Redskins. Dallas Cowboys on Monday night football favored by seven against the Giants. And we have the Seattle Seahawks favored by six. I actually think that line might have moved up to seven recently uh, at home against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Any of these jump out to you, Brian? Yeah, I think San Francisco minus 10. I am a sucker for the big favorites uh, in Survivor. Buffalo, those would be my two picks. But I guess the real question is, uh, are we really going to stray away from the strategy of going anti-Dolphins? Can you really take yeah. the, the Jets on the road minus three uh, in Survivor? I also see in our notes you put uh, Cleveland minus three. I guess that's a an anti-Brandon Allen play. Yeah, I mean, with Denver going away from Flacco and to Brandon Allen, 
poorly Flacco has played over the last few years in the NFL. I'm not sure what town grade that actually is, but this is a Cleveland team that's hungry for a win to keep any remote hopes of a playoff spot alive. And got to bet. I personally think you can bet on the talent on this team. And I think Cleveland is probably the clear favorite to win this game. I think it's only minus three because they are on the road. If this was on a neutral field, it would be a bigger spread than that. Yeah, I think that's fair. You know, traveling mile high, a little bit tougher. So uh, if you view some of these other teams, uh, I don't like the, I mean, I don't mind the spot that Cleveland is in. So good call there, Chris. But I think if they're available, continue yeah. with the, the strategy. High favorite San Francisco or yep. Buffalo looks like the best bet. So yeah, for sure. All right, moving back over to fantasy football. Uh, streaming quarterbacks this week. If you have a guy on by, let's, let's say you have Matt Ryan on by. Maybe there's some other quarterbacks that you have or maybe your quarterbacks just suck. Who are some guys on the waiver wire, Chris, that you think you can pick up, put in right in your, into your starting lineup? Well, it's always a good idea to try and roster to start for some of the most high-scoring, uh, potent offenses in the league, right? And so, obviously, we have an opportunity again here in exposure to the Kansas City Chiefs with Matt Moore. I uh, personally play most of my, you know, no free ads necessarily, but I, I play most of my leagues on Yahoo, and I see Matt Moore here against the Vikings is only 8% owned in leagues, so very easy to grab him and plug him in. Uh, Gardner Minshew on Sunday morning in London against the Houston Texans. It's a little higher owned. He's in the 60% range in most, uh, or in leagues, so he may, you know, already be owned, you know, for a lot of you out there who are listening, but if he is available, definitely love the spot for him. I think he's a top 10 quarterback this week with how he's been playing and then Derek Carr uh only about 40 percent owned in leagues uh I think the Raiders have uh, one of the highest implied team totals on the week um so definitely like that uh favorites against the Lions so uh those are the three that stand out to me as the probably the safest options and I know he's played poorly Brian but Sam Darnold is widely available only 24 percent owned and gets to play the historically inept Miami Dolphins. So I think we have to consider him as well. Yeah. I mean, every quarterback has exceeded their yearly average versus the Dolphins. So uh, Sam Darnold, I mean, he's just two weeks removed, or I guess three weeks removed uh, from that 300 yard game against the Cowboys. And it's not like the Miami Dolphins have any pass rush to speak of. So I, uh, uh, yeah, I think in uh, in deeper leagues, Darnold's definitely fine. Yeah. And I, and I'm just, you know, full tank mode for these Dolphins. I think Xavier Howard too. So he's not going to be out there covering a or any of Darnold's primary receivers, so that only helps here for sure. Not that they would make a play call to actually cover receivers anyways. So uh, <laughs> That touchdown at the end of the first half was <laughs> unbelievable. Um, uh, my goodness. Yeah, literally engage eight from Madden. That was incredible. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, streaming defenses. You know, this is a fantastic strategy that we talk about every single week where you don't need to draft a defense high in your draft. Just pick up defenses, play matchups, and you can even mm-hmm. get – a week ahead if you have an extra bench spot. Um, Chris, any any spots stick out this week aside from the, the – well, I guess my question is, um, I was talking with a few people this week, just you know, back and forth, fantasy questions, and we, we like to target the Dolphins' offense every week as a streaming defense. Are you confident enough in the Jets to continue that trend? I don't know, and I do think ownership percentages are kind of reflected in that, even though we are – Recording this after most waiver runs for people, the Jets are still only about 40% owned in leagues. So it doesn't seem like the universe of fantasy players has a ton of faith in them in this spot, which I don't know. I think that's crazy. I think it's an easy call to add the Jets, but there are some other spots that do stand out. We already covered this a little bit. I think it is the Browns against the the Denver Broncos, uh, the glorified AAF quarterback uh, starting for them. So uh, definitely think the Browns defense is in a great spot as well. And then, um, you know, surprisingly, the Dallas Cowboys defense, probably because they were just on their bye, is still available for a lot of people. Uh, they're only 45% on. So those are the three that I look for first when I'm streaming this week. Yeah, I like those calls. Uh, and I love looking at ownership. Honestly, especially if you're playing on a public platform like Yahoo, NFL.com, uh, you can very easily play fantasy football and not listen to much, uh, not to to uh, entice you to to stop listening to our podcast. <laughs> but uh, looking at ownership percentages and the changes in ownership from week to week uh, can really drive a lot of your waiver wire decisions if you don't have time or or don't have the resources to to make waiver wire claims. So I, I like your call with the Jets. Um, Cleveland makes a lot of sense, and in Dallas, like you said, most people. Uh, dropped them during their bye week and I, again two more defenses that may be picked up they're 61 percent owned on yahoo uh, the eagles versus the bears and the seahawks versus the buccaneers uh, two teams that i would look at too so 
Yeah, never a bad idea to bet against uh, Jameis Winston throwing some interceptions. So like that Seahawks call for sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, the final segment of our season-long fantasy football episode this week. Uh, we take it to Twitter, ask our followers for some of the toughest decisions that they have to make. Uh, so, Chris, I'll start and say that um, we, we had a, a great question from OVO Jake talking about Chubb, Nick Chubb being a sell-high candidate with Kareem Hunt coming back next week. He also has Leonard Fournette, Tevin Coleman, and you and I were talking right before we started recording that all three of these guys have pretty favorable schedules down the stretch. Yeah, and, and you know, fully uh, full transparency is the name of the game for me. I am a Browns fan, so I'm not going to necessarily advocate for selling high on Chubb, but I actually think removing that from it, the, the data sort of backs this up. If we look ahead to the playoffs, which I think if you have – you know, a realistic shot to make the playoffs in your leagues. This is the time to start thinking about those matchups. I do think most people play a three round playoff that starts in week 14 with a championship in week 16. Uh, Nick Chubb plays the Bengals, the Cardinals and the Ravens in those three weeks. And these are all below average rush defenses. So I definitely think Chubb is a hold, even with Kareem Hunt coming back from his eight game suspension. You know, we don't have to look too far into the past to see how, uh, Freddie Kitchens on offense treated his assets in the running back room uh, with more than one player that is worth putting out in the field. Uh, last year they had Duke Johnson still and Chubb still played, you know, between 50, 60 percent of the snaps once he became the starter. So definitely think that's probably what you will see. And in games where the Browns are favored, which they probably have a few opportunities there, I just outlined where they will be favored. He's probably still going to see a ton of action. I, I think I don't see <clears throat> any way where Hunt who hasn't played all year, even has some injuries with the, the groin or hamstring, whatever it may be. Um, so he hasn't been been practicing too much. A lot of his suspension was spent rehabbing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's kind of a pipe dream for most Hunt. Uh, pe- people who are rostering Hunt, hoping that will come back and take a huge role. It sounds like I agree with yeah. you that, that Chubb's going to continue to get a big role here down the yeah. stretch. So. Now, I, I don't know. I mean, Jake would – obviously, he only gave us this question, so I don't know if he's looking for help but- – like that so maybe he needs to make a deal if i were to sell one of these three brian it would probably be tevin coleman and the only reason i think it's tevin coleman is just because of these three he has the most competition on his own team for touches so uh definitely a good idea to take players who are coming up four touchdown games too and try to sell high probably can get a lot for him yeah as we'll likely discuss in this week's thursday edition of the daily plug uh players yeah. coming off a of four touchdown game so yeah. Um, all right, two questions for you, Chris, from Double Eagles 66, longtime follower Nick. Uh, first one is Stefan Diggs or Odell Beckham this week in half point PPR or Jordan Howard, or sorry, and Jordan Howard or Austin Eckler in half point PPR. Yeah, so I know that we're still waiting on an official line um, Chiefs Vikings game because there's some uncertainty about whether or not Mahomes will play, right? But one of the early ones I saw that is probably off the board now, was right around a 49-point total for this game. You had the Browns and the um, Broncos. Their total, I think, is 39. So just kind of looking at that one data point, I think Diggs is probably in a better spot this week. It's probably going to be a much higher scoring game. It's kind of incredible that anybody is in a position where they're benching either one of these guys right now, frankly. But uh, hopefully that means Nick has a super deep team here. But I would take Diggs over OBJ for sure. Yeah, it's a close one for me. Um, I think just given the volume, I would uh, I would go with Diggs as well. And then as far as Eckler and uh, Jordan Howard, it's a fantastic question. So uh, Eckler gets the Packers this week. Chris, last week the, the, the Chargers offense did literally nothing. Eckler got five touches. Gordon got ten. They combined for like 50 yards. Um and kind of tying this into what we, you and I were talking about before the show started, there was a trade that went down in your league where someone traded Austin Eckler for Hunter Henry. So, uh, you know, all of us here at Occupy Fantasy, we love Austin Eckler. We think he yeah. should be the lead dog there for the Chargers. But uh, given what is happening in reality, I don't mind that Hunter Henry trade, and I would love to hear your thoughts on, on Austin Eckler's value moving forward this week. And yeah, I mean, the, the thing that we're going to have to monitor – you know, I don't think we've mentioned this yet, but the Chargers uh, fired their longtime offensive coordinator, Ken Wisenhunt. So obviously internally there seems to be some dissatisfaction with how they've been calling plays. So maybe that's a tell that Austin Eckler will get a opportunity, but no, anybody that tells you they know how this shake out right now is 
lying to you uh, if they don't work for the charges, if that makes sense. So um, Eckler should get more touches, but just based off what we have to look at here, you know, it seems like Melvin Gordon is the guy. They seem to want to feed him the football and get him back it, to hit the level that we know he is capable of. So, um, you know, answering Nick's question, I think I would have to go with Jordan Howard just because we know he's the lead back. And, you know, in the league that I play in where a couple of my buddies exchange assets here on the Chargers, I definitely think it makes sense to try and move Austin Eckler right now for – Anything you can get for him, especially if you're weak at another position. You know, if some of your buddies, some of your friends do not necessarily pay attention as closely to, you know, these trends as we do. And I we know that if you're listening to the Occupy Fantasy podcast, you're a diehard fantasy player. So you're probably a little smarter than some of your lead mates of this stuff. Um, definitely makes sense to try and move on from Austin Eckler, just based on how we see the usage shaking out right now. Yeah, I'm curious to see. I, I will be monitoring closely this week with the departure of Ken Wisenhunt to see if anything changes on that offense. Uh, but yeah, again, they, they seem content with giving yeah. Melvin Gordon the majority of the workload there. So Yeah, I mean, I guess I just, before we wrap this up, I, I used to specify that's definitely just redraft leagues only. If you can players, if this is a dynasty, I would hold on to Austin Eckler. But if this is just a straight league where you redraft your players every year, yeah, probably time to look at doing something else there. Yep. Totally agree there. Okay, that'll do it for this week's season-long fantasy football edition of the Occupy Fantasy Football co- Podcast. Be sure to subscribe, whether it's on YouTube or in your favorite podcast app, to be notified when our latest vid- videos and podcasts are available. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Brian Jester FF. You can follow Chris at CDR02989. And, of course, you can follow us at Occupy Fantasy on Twitter and at Occupy Fantasy. For Chris, I am Brian. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.